Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem, this is Foundry VTT version 12. We are in Curse of Strahd, bit of an update. I've done a few things in the background because there's only so much of you watching me do the same thing that you will tolerate, I'm sure. Um, but I want to show you a couple of things I've done. I've made a couple of amendments. So in the last video, I've just demonstrated the fact I've got my lightning button, which does that, which is pretty cool. I like that. It's a nice effect. Um, I've added an extra one. So in this scene, as they go to walk away, there is a, there's the gallows um, and they see a spectral figure, only just very briefly hanging from the gallows. Um, and you pick one of the party to realise that it looks very much like them and it's generally supposed to be the person who's basically pissed off Strahd the most <laughs> um, but you can use whatever as a DM of course you can you'll be flexible so I have actually added another one on here let me show you what it does okay so if you're looking at the gallows I'll do it again for you just so you can see that Hey, okay so it's basically a replication of this lighting button but I did something a little bit different so um, what I've got on here is first of all I activate that light um, but also I've got a hidden tile here you can just see in fact actually if I select it you can see the orange border around this tile um, and it's got two images on it one is of a hanged ghostly figure the other one is just a plain transparent PNG so it doesn't it's not swamping my scene um, because it's a transparent a PNG you can't see it which is great so it's going to switch that to the picture, then it's going to wait 0.4 seconds, so it's slightly longer, and then it's going to switch that tile image back to the invisible one, deactivate the lightning, and of course play that sound. So that's all that is doing, and it does give us this beautiful little effect of very briefly. So I'm not going to mention, when I'm running this, I'm not going to mention the fact that they see this ghostly figure. Um, as they're preparing to depart, I'm going to do that. And the player's paying attention should go whoa hang on a minute what was that it's it, they've seen it and it's gone and then i can message one of the players individually to say i'm sure that was an image of yourself hanging there um you know word that better um but yeah let me just show you this this tile itself so this tile itself of course i've tagged it with a name um and uh, under triggers i've just got two images on here one is a blank png the other one is my image of a hanged person nothing else on here at all um, doesn't need to be activated by anybody because this button is the one that's doing the job no images on that button it's just a click by the game master like my other buttons there but i thought that was a really nice sort of little addition to this scene that introduces that little bit of spookiness um, which I'm not having to verbally describe to them um, because I don't want to have to verbally describe loads of stuff um, when I can use the power of Foundry to do that. Okay, so I did that. Uh, what else did I do? I also moved on and built, this is a very straightforward encounter, I built the um, so just as a reminder, I am using the Strad Reloaded as my main guide. So some of these scenes don't appear in the original, but they're all designed to help build some additional story and prop up the plot a bit. Um, and it's a really good piece of work. So that is at stradreloaded.com. And this is one of the encounters. So uh, they've already should have encountered this a little bluebird down here who's actually a were raven muriel um they don't know about it but they see that in the barovia village and then as they're traveling towards the sir paul um going to look for madam eva they along the road this bird flies in clearly looking wounded as it's pursued by these creatures so it's, it's not that it's the greater strix and it should be, I haven't changed the name, it says Swarm of Ravens, they should be Swarm of Strix, but they are the same stats and everything for it. Now I've just got these hidden of course, because when the characters first approach, they won't see it. So we've got this nice little image that I generated for this creature, because it only appears for this. It's got basically the stat block of a manticore behind it, um, so it's a, it's, it's a tough challenge. Um, for them it's a good little fight nice bit of bundle break it up a bit so of course I have used a battle map for this but that's all it is I've used reused the same map that I used for Van Richten's cache cache um, 
Uh, I just slapped that down. It doesn't matter. The scenery looks all pretty much the same here. That's fine. The PCs will come on from this side um, and as they're walking across I will reveal this, describe the bird coming in and then describe these coming in to attack. And the idea is, <laughs> it never goes to plan, the idea is, is the party will fight these creatures off to defend Muriel and potentially end up taking Muriel with them. Right, the next scene that I've done is the Sir Paul. Right, so this is where they meet Madam Eva um, and get their first card reading. So I've just used this uh, Aeon Bars maps. I got it, I said it right this time, not Anno Bar. Aeon Bars maps. Um, I've just used their encounter map for this. And I have slapped out the appropriate characters again in line with Strahd Reloaded. So here is Stanimir again. It was Stanimir, wasn't it? Uh, Stanimir. They met him initially at the, the very first scene, the Mysterious Visitors. So, yes, he has managed to travel back to the camp, because bear in mind that the players have been stuck in Death House, they've been going around Barovia and things like that, uh, you know, the village. So he's absolutely managed to get ahead of them, and he meets them here, uh, and there's a couple of other people here as well. So I've, obviously I've created actors for those. So we've got um, Eliza, and we've got... Um, Arturi is here and Stanimir as well so I've created another folder for the Sir Paul people just to keep them neat and tidy uh, and this is a big role-playing opportunity but one of the big things here is they come and I need to make sure she's hidden she is they come and meet Madam Eva now they probably recognize go hang on a minute that's who Stanimir was talking about earlier okay so I've decided to link those people from that initial scene um, back in here so it kind of comes a bit full circle I want my players to form connections with these individuals to recognize them and move forward kind of building levels of trust even with people that they shouldn't trust because uh, that's quite important now what happens when they actually come into here to have their card reading and I was umming and ahhing about that how do I do the card reading well watch this if I can get this right that's the first card she lays out. That's the second card, the third card, the fourth card, and finally the fifth card. So I was wondering, do I have a scene in the tent, a completely different scene of in there um, and going through that? And I decided not to do that. I can do the card reading directly from here. Uh, the first one is the traitor, um, the, uh, the mirror, my mirror. <laughs> I've got to work out how to say that. <laughs> the Mimido, Mimidon. The Myramidon. However, again, it's one of those things that doesn't matter how you say it, just try and be consistent. <laughs> uh, the Bishop. Then the Mists. And the Marionette. So that's how I've decided to do my card reading. Now, of course, this is one of those ones where, oh, I've got bloody tiles over everything. But they nicely just disappear for me so again it's just using that trick if I pick on one of these it's just a uh, monk's active tile trigger of course um, and the um, go to triggers your setup for it is only the game master and they double click on it and again I just have three images so I have that blank PNG which is what's showing now so you can't see anything which means I can move my tokens below it's not in my way it's just making my life a bit easier then I've got my image for the back of the card and then I've got my image for the front of the card so double clicking it changes the image to the next thing in line which is the back of the card and you'll notice all the back of the cards the same and then when I double click it again it turns that card over and reveals what that card is. Now you may have noticed that first of all it was the traitor, the second it's the traitor, it's only ever going to be the traitor on that card. So in the original game the idea was is that you did that tarot reading actually with a deck um, and there's rules for how you use a normal playing deck of cards to represent those and it tells them where to go and look for stuff. Now most people I know who have run this they kind of homebrew that bit and they do not have it randomized um, because it can send them back to places they've already been. It can cause the party to miss out on really, uh, really nice encounters and stuff. So most people I know who, who have run it in the past, you know, over the decades, <coughs> cough, cough, <laughs> 
have deliberately stacked the deck to say this is where I want to send them this time around because I want them to have this encounter I want them to do this um, and cut the Strahd Reloaded are very much of that mindset so they've laid out and gone actually look we've got rid of that we've got rid of this we want them to follow this path so they've determined um, and I agree with them I agree with them um, the way that they've chosen to do that uh, and the descriptions and things so again using the um, Curse of Strahd Reloaded it gives you that information but the module the reloaded version doesn't tell you what the traitor means so you've got to go back to the original module so that you can actually know what that card is supposed to be what Madam Eva says when she does that card which is a nice way of saying we've kind of rewritten the module but without infringing on the copyright so um, <laughs> again you know uh, can't run this without the actual module behind it or at least you certainly can't run Curse of Strahd you could run something similar using it um, but yeah I just wanted to show that's what we've done that's where we're up to I'm quite pleased with this I think this is a nice way of doing it um, it's not going to interfere with the players when they're around the camp doing the role-playing stuff that happens after the card reading you know we can move our tokens around without any problems there's nothing getting in the way of the DM um, we've got a couple of scenes that uh, if we go back to um, if we go into the mists for example just the Fallich Road here we've got some scenes like this that for the DM are really quite cluttered because they've got lots of tiles it works beautifully for the players and I've tested it a number of times to make sure um, but using that invisible PNG and somebody mentioned it oh, months ago about using invisible PNG it doesn't really matter if we're on a scene like this um, because there's no battle map but where we have got a battle map um, and we want to be able to move tokens around obviously you know having them on the back here that's just going to be really cluttered and originally I had the Svalich Road here with potentially having that wolf encounter and because of that issue I actually decided if they'd stop to fight the wolves I'm going to switch them to a battle map to do that so they may or may not get involved in this wolf battle and may or may not use this scene um, if they don't start moving immediately when they hear those wolf howls then I will switch them over to this and then they will be in a race to the edge of the map that's my plan um, and as I've said before I don't want them to get into this fight I want them to run away but there's always in every party <laughs> one player who thinks that their first level fighter can take on the world <laughs> it always happens i'm sure you guys know exactly what i'm talking about um so you know we've all got stories haven't we first uh, first level fighter um leather armor decided to take on a bear in the woods because he refused to accept the fact that this bear was incredibly threatening was clearly very dangerous the dm was giving them all of the hints you know like you know it will kill you um it drooled at him it used a couple of actions just to posture to show how strong it was and on its first attack it smashed the fighter's wooden shield to pieces and just scattered the splinters everywhere and the player insisted it was still worth trying to fight um, and it went down in history in our group as the quickest player death out of any campaign. It was literally the very first thing that he encountered. Uh, <laughs> it was just like you, Muppets. <laughs> You've all got stories, I'm sure. I'm sure I won't ask you to put your best stories in the comments. We'll be here forever. Um, although that could be a fun little series, couldn't it? Your stupid, pl stupid player deaths, the ones that refuse to take the hint. Um, there's other channels that do stuff like that, so we don't need to. Um, yeah, so. I think this bit is all kind of ready to go um, so that takes us up to really almost the end of the this part of it which is the um, the, the into the mists uh, chapter if you like there's a big chunk of this there's a lot that happens around this campsite beside the card reading lots of role play opportunity a bit of a game of storytelling um, around the fire and things like that which is really nice uh, really helps build those um, you know those uh, relationships with the Vistani rightly or wrongly of course um, and then there's a bit of a side quest with um, Artie uh, if they decide to track him down when he leaves at night uh, and they're given a gift now the 
couple of other things that happen next uh, if I go to the if I go to the landing page and activate my map bring this up so they are over here so we've left the village of Barovia they've traveled along here to the crossroads where the hangman is uh, and they travel up here to the Sir uh, Paul which is where the camp is just up here and the idea is now on this map it shows that that trail goes through but actually that trail is going to be impassable due to flooding so they're going to have to come back to the crossroads so at the crossroads the second time they're going to meet a skeletal rider um, it's not supposed to be a, a combat encounter um, but they just meet it and then they head round this road where they encounter the watchtower so the watchtower is to be done before they get to the the Sir Falls so the waterfalls here at the bridge um, a bit of an encounter there they meet the black carriage again potentially um, the old bone grinder potentially to do as well uh, and then they're almost yep there's the oh the werewolf's hunt I hadn't realized that's in there so there's actually a few scenes still to go before we then enter the village itself uh, so we've got to walk we've got to work our way all the way up here before we actually uh, enter Valaki itself of course um, yeah and then we'll have that definitely as a different chapter so we've got a few more scenes a few more than I realized here to deal with with do with the gate and the mill and things like that the the ruined tower and stuff um, so yeah a few more to go in this so into the valley is, is quite a big chapter there's a lot of travel lots of encounters lots of uh, continuing to set that scene and stuff uh, I, I do love Curse of uh, Curse of Strahd. I, I, it's just such a good campaign. It's just so well themed. It's beautiful. Anyway, shall I shut up now? Uh, let's reset that so that map's not active. Uh, yeah, so we've, I've done a fair few little bits. I mean, I haven't achieved much. I've created basically two scenes, but actually I've got them looking nice and working nice how I want to, and I'm really pleased with the way that these cards work on here like that. Uh, really good um, and of course I made them double click so we're not accidentally clicking them <laughs> setting them off at the wrong time they arrive in the camp and I reveal all the cards immediately would be embarrassing shush up brilliant take care guys I'll see you in the next one